And speaking of market sell-off, let's take a look at the major so-called FANG stocks. Right now, the biggest names in tech are caught in the headline of a whole bunch of crosshairs, and that deluge is not slowing down anytime soon. Starting with what, tech regulation? Not in Europe, as you would expect, but here at home in the U.S., President Trump saying he will consider reaching across the aisle to work with Democrats to regulate social media companies like Twitter, Facebook, and Alphabet. Then you have Google CEO Sundar Pichai. He's gearing up to head to Capitol Hill in the next few weeks for a public hearing. A lot of that has to do with uh, privacy, things like that. But the dangers aren't just here at home. Take a look overseas. Big tech bracing for impact after UK's finance minister announced a new digital services tax on revenues that will apply to search engines, social media platforms and online marketplaces. Multiple countries in Asia and Latin America say, you know what, we like that idea. We may follow suit in the tech tax train. And forget the external threats. What about the demons within? Companies like Google and Facebook promising to be more forceful and open about their handling of sexual misconduct cases after Google employees staged a walkout across the nation. Where to begin? Well, we know with whom to begin. We have big money name behind Yahoo and its success having served as an early investor in so many names, also managing partner at SoftBank Capital. We welcome Lehrer Hippo Ventures partner Eric Hippo in a Fox Business exclusive. First, your thought on this tech sell-off, which is uh, pretty outsized right now. Um, I, I, I really don't know what's happening in the short term. It doesn't look like there's anything specific. Maybe it's the, uh, the high dollar or whatever it may be. I, I don't see anything in the long term that fundamentally changes the way that these companies are able to uh, uh, profit and able to grow. Uh, so I have no idea what happens in the short term. Okay, so you say that. <laughs> However, we have seen that regulation or missteps like what Facebook had experienced certainly in the past year have hurt the stock. So let's whip through some of these challenges. First one, your thoughts on President Trump possibly banding together with the Democrats. Both he and the Democrats have said they'd like to regulate big tech. Okay, so, so that's a real concern because regulation is inevitable. We, in the past year, we've seen Europe take a major step with their GDPR mm -hmm. uh, policies, which... <clears throat> which, by the way, gen, uh, it's a data protection regulation for... Right, which is the things. fundamental issue having to do with regulating tech, which is who owns the data? Do you, as an individual who is on social media, do you own the data or right. do the companies own the data? So you think that's going to happen here well, by the president and Democrats? Well, the, 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 the issue there is that, that, that the, the, it could be politically minded. In other words, there was a whole discussion about whether the, uh, the, the big tech companies discriminated against the more right-leaning uh, content companies. That's another issue. I don't see, the, I don't see why you should regulate that. That's, uh, that's another matter. But the, the matter of data, uh, which is a core issue with the Europeans, that's coming to the U.S. in one way or the other. California already passed a law uh, that is going to be effective in 2020. The federal government is going to pass something. All right. So if we're looking at, say, for example, Twitter, Facebook, Snap, these are social media companies. You worried about any of these three stocks in the near term? In as much as regulation will make them readjust the way they do business, uh, not, not in the near term, but certainly in the midterm. Okay. Uh, let's get to the digital taxes that could be hit on some of these companies, whether it is online marketplaces, search, or social media. You have the U.K. Finance Minister, Philip Hammond, last week announcing, hey, this might be a good idea. Let's just slap them with the tax. I remember when that hit the tape last week, these stocks fell. What do you think is going to happen with these names? Is it worth it to keep your money in them or even to pick up some? Well, look, that's a very bad idea. Mm -hmm. This is targeting people who have you know, high growth, high profits, simply because inside the, the European Union, you can move your profits around and go to the least, least taxed uh, 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 places. Mm -hmm. This is an internal uh, EU issue. The problem with, with slapping these companies with a 2% tax, first of all, 2%, goes to 4%, goes to 10%. Secondly... Oh, yeah, they, you take an inch and there goes the mile. Yeah, and secondly, it, it will invite retaliation uh, from the United States or whoever else. It will stifle competition and innovation. That's not a good idea. Okay, so let's put these up. Amazon, Facebook, Google, do you feel that those... And Uber's not publicly traded, but it too could be affected by this. Short term, would you stay in the stock? 
I, I'm not a stock picker, but I, I, I do own all these stocks. Yes, I will stay in those stocks. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. All right, now let's get to privacy. This is a very touchy subject, both overseas with, as you said, the uh, European regulations, but also here. You're talking about Google CEO Sundar Pinchai. He's headed to Capitol Hill amid these concerns about privacy. Are they just going to roast him? Is it just a dog and pony show when they go before Congress? Well, there's a lot of showboating, and it, as we've seen from prior uh, uh, questioning of uh, Mark Zuckerberg, as an example, Congress is, doesn't really understand tech as well as they should. Mm -hmm. So the questions are kind of all over the place. Um, but the issue of privacy is a real issue. In other words, um, they, there's, th these big tech companies have become surveillance organizations that uh, take your data. Okay, and, that, and totally what you it. just said yeah. scares me. It's true. They have become surveillance organizations. You can see it when you're writing emails that suddenly you use a certain word and then an ad for that pops up. I mean, that's AI meets surveillance meets is somebody watching. I, I, this gets nerve wracking. And yet, what's our alternative? Um, to control your own data, that to say, yes, you can use this data, or no, I, I don't allow you to use this data. Uh, yes, I want you to delete this data. I want you to forgive me, to forget me. I don't exist. This, <laughs> the, well, this, they this, don't, though. This is a law that exists in Europe, as an example, that you can say, hey, just ig Wipe ignore it. me. I don't exist anymore. You, you are in control of your own persona. Your persona is manifested in the digital world through data. You should be in control of your data. When you look at the relationship between tech and government, that I think as we look toward a Democratic controlled House, Republican controlled Senate, and of course President Trump as a Republican president, they all seem to have different opinions and they don't necessarily uh, line up in lockstep as we have seen in the past. No, but the, 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 the tech industry is, is, is generally speaking very liberal leaning. Uh, so you would think that they would ally themselves with the Democrats in Congress. However, there's a lot of complications in all of this. You know, these tech companies should really not get themselves involved in politics. Well, from politics, though, to their own employees, we saw the Google protests. We, can, we were just amazed also to see that, that you have uh, Facebook now agreeing with Uber and some of the other companies, Lyft, saying no longer will they force arbitration in sexual harassment cases, which is actually a good a thing. A good thing. That's actually a very good thing. But uh, you also have some of the employees at certain companies, Google specifically, who said don't get involved in government contracts. Um, and then the CEOs are backing away. I'm all for listening to employees, uh, but... This, to me, looks like you have the tail wagging the dog a little bit. Oh, by the way, with the notable exception of Jeff Bezos, who has said that Amazon will continue to work with the government on their, on their facial recognition technology. Stood up with that. Look, the, yes, the, the, a, the, the tech industry has always been very close to the government. Um, the, the early semiconductor companies basically depended on government contracts to uh, survive. For their, to survive. Yes. Uh, DARPA invented the internet. We all benefit from the internet. The GPS system was launched by the military. We benefit from that. So if you stop that cooperation between te the tech companies and, and, and the government, you will have a lot of innovation that will go away and other countries might take the lead. And if nothing else, this country is worth helping and defending and saving our best technology for our military. Absolutely. As Why long not? as it's legitimate... Uh, it's a contract. Yes, uh, th th there's no reason for tech not to participate. Eric Hippo, uh, big venture capitalist. Casper, <laughs> I need to ask you, when's that going public, <laughs> if ever, the big mattress uh, disruptor? Uh, eventually. Eventually. <laughs> okay, we'll keep posted on that. Thank you so much, Eric My Hippo. Pleasure.